guys, it is your girl Jade Ashley and I want to welcome you back to an all new video of When The Beat Drops. And like always, you know I'm here to give you my five hottest beats in music of this week. So of course you know you gotta stay tuned for more. Okay guys, so let's dive into this week's beats. So I'm pretty sure you guys know from my first beat of this week, I have to talk about Beyonce's new Netflix documentary, Homecoming. Now I kind of feel like I might have been maybe one of the last people to watch it. But if you guys don't know about it, Homecoming is basically the documentary that covers Beyonce's 2018 Coachella, or as we know it, Beachella performance. We also not only see clips that we've already seen, which was her performing on stage, but we get to go behind the scenes. We get to see what happened in rehearsals. We get to see what Beyonce went through, you know, preparing for it. And um, it's just so much inspiring things that we can learn from Beyonce, that we can learn from the people that um, participated in the performance with her. So that was like literally the talk of this week. That was what everyone, you know, was excited about. Uh, Netflix had, you know, let us know, I think probably like a week or two ago that this documentary was coming out. So everybody knew that this week was the week that you know Beyonce was dropping this film and all of our attention was going to Netflix. So at first I thought it was kind of like a oh you know 12 o'clock on the dot on the 16th is exactly when it was going to drop. That wasn't the case or whatever. So basically it dropped at like different times like in like different countries and stuff like that or like different uh, time zones. So my time here in New York, which is East Coast time, it wasn't dropping until three o'clock in the morning. And honestly, I contemplated like, hmm, maybe I should stay up. That way, you know, I can watch it like everybody else. So I can kind of be on and stuff. And I didn't even want to risk it just because, you know, when I work, I primarily work in the morning time and I work early in the morning. So I wanted to be able to get up to work and do what I got to do because, you know, how y'all gonna engage in content if I don't start on time and stuff. So, you know, I was just like, I'm gonna eventually watch it. So, I did, as far as like work purposes, like the day of, or like as soon as it like came out like later on, like if it came out like three o'clock in the morning, like my time, I'm up at like five o'clock in the morning, pretty much gathering reactions and stuff and seeing what people are saying about it on social media. So I kinda had a sense of what was in there just a little bit based off of social media, just because that's part of my job and stuff like that. So, I mean, I kinda got a sense of, like I said, some of the things that was going on. So, you know, everybody was ranting and raving about it, talking about how much they love it. Michelle Obama, she sat here and she did like this whole congratulations, you know, video to Beyonce telling her, you know, how she's inspired. And it was absolutely awesome. I did not see it until uh, Thursday night, actually. Uh, I just finally just decided to sit up because I didn't have to work early Friday, which is technically the day that I'm recording. So technically I watched it last night, finally. No, it, it came out what? Yeah, it came out Wednesday. So I was only a day late. I'm making it seem like I, I, I was like a couple of days late. Whatever. So you know what? Scratch what I said before I wasn't the first or one of the last people. But anyway, regardless of the fact, I did watch it last night. And um, like I said, when, Coach, when her Coachella performance happened last year, we obviously, if you watched it through a live stream and stuff like that, like I did, then you know what happens. But I mean, it's Beyonce. So I was like, why wouldn't we want to watch it all over again? So that was one thing. And um, yeah, I was just inspired. Some people said that they was crying. So I was prepared to cry, but I didn't cry. But just to see, you know, just the sacrifices that she did to, you know, bring us this bomb ass performance. Um, as you guys know, she was originally scheduled to perform for the 2017 uh, Coachella. She was headlined for Coachella for 2017. But she ended up getting pregnant with her twins, Sir and Rumi. So she had to cancel that. And then she said, trust me, I'm going to be back bigger and better. And just to see, you know, her embracing her body. That kind of made me feel a little bit better about my body. Because I don't know if you guys know, but I really hate my body. But whatever. That's a whole other story. But, um, and I mean, she technically went through pregnancy. So we don't have really similarities or whatever the case may be. But just to know, you know, we hold Beyonce on like this really high pedestal. 
and you know we just you know her body is always right hair makeup like you know she's a triple threat like she just does it all so just to know that she actually struggled obviously after having you know her third and uh, her second and third child that she struggled you know with you know body image and you know having to physically get back into shape to do this so you know we learned about the strict diet where she was like oh no carbs no bread no well she said no alcohol I was like okay I was like, I'm not about that life but no alcohol she was like no fish no meats I'm like that that is dedication because I would have been like Coachella about to get whatever body I give it but she gave us her all she looked bomb as hell like literally while watching a documentary and watching you know the behind the scenes footage and seeing her perform and you know rehearsing all of this other stuff you literally see her sh not shrinking but you see her losing the weight from her pregnancy and getting back into shape and obviously she had to be in shape because that was a long ass Coachella performance uh I don't think there'll ever be anything like it. I've never been to Coachella, but just, you know, observing what's going on at Coachella through social media and stuff like that. And Coachella actually going on right now. This upcoming weekend is the second weekend. Um, I would kind of give off that it's not the energies that I'm receiving, you know, through social media and what I'm observing and stuff. Coachella doesn't really seem like a big deal like it was last year because Beyonce was there. And some of the performances that I did see obviously does not top it production wise, length wise. Like she brought her all. She, I guess, wanted to prove to herself. Yes, you know, now I'm a mother of three. I'm a wife and stuff like that. But. I can still be this performer that I've always been. And she proved herself, um, the editing, the editing. Like, you know, we all know she, you know, did the same performance one weekend and another weekend because Coachella is two weekends, but you know, just the outfit changes. So like literally like during the editing, it will go from the yellow outfits to the pink outfits. And then like everything about this was just so freaking awesome. And then another thing, um, which I feel was like pretty much the real important message was you know to show love to historically black colleges to show love to you know just black culture in general um there was a line that she said in the film where she said instead of going to coachella with my you know flower crown i felt it was important to bring our culture you know to the festival and like that couldn't have been more true like I don't know if I ever told you guys, but I did actually go to HBCU. I didn't graduate from the HBCU, but my freshman year, I did attend um, North Carolina A&T. So like just watching, you know, homecoming, that kind of took me back to my own um, HBCU experience because I was blessed enough to have an HBCU experience because, you know, not everyone goes to HBCUs. I always wanted to go to HBCU, um, but eventually when I got there, me... This would be a whole nother story. It's probably be a story time or something like that. But uh, I wanted to come back to New York eventually. But the fact that I was able to succeed and attend an HBCU and have that, I had a, I had a homecoming experience. I had the experience of going to the football games and basketball games and seeing the band and seeing the drum line, seeing the dances and stuff. Like I had that experience. So you know, also watching her prepare with these. Um, prepare with the you know these dancers and these musicians and stuff like that that kind of took me back and made me think about my own HBCU experience so like literally after I watched homecoming I went like on Facebook and I started going through pictures from like my freshman year and I was like oh I remember this and when we was at that game and I text one of my friends and I like sent her some of the pictures and I was like girl I just fought, finished watching homecoming and it just made me think of freshman year and I just had to send you these pictures of us from freshman year but um yeah it's amazing i'm gonna watch it again probably 10 15 times like it's i think aside from just seeing beyonce be beyonce and see her in her glory and see her be this amazing performer it's more so a motivational piece it's more so a motivational piece because it's like you see these performances you see beyonce killing it but it's like when you see what she did to get to that point that kind of motivates you and you kind of like all right i need to be on my shit you know i'm no beyonce and i'm not about to be on here you know be on stage singing my heart out and stuff like that but i feel like whatever field you're in whatever you're trying to you know succeed in and stuff like that watching beyonce you know do what she needed to do for that performance provided enough you know motivation for you to do what you needed to do 
So if you did not see Homecoming on Netflix, I absolutely recommend it. You will love it. Um, as you guys know, not only did she, you know, release Homecoming, the, um, the documentary, but she released Homecoming, the uh, live album. So like, even if you don't want to watch it, you can still like listen to, listen to it. So like I automatically, when I woke up, you know, Wednesday, I just downloaded the album, um, bonus tracks. She, she did her own version for Before I Let Go, you know, the classic, uh, Frank, Frankie Beverly and Mays and, you know, we got a new anthem. You know, everybody's been saying that we got a new anthem for the cookouts and, the, you know, the gatherings and stuff for the summer. Shout out to um, Tay Key. Like, it's literally, it's lit. Like, she, like, I'm just waiting. She, she Soon she's going to announce new music. Y'all don't see it, but I see it. New music is coming soon. And I hear she got more projects to do with Netflix. So it's just absolutely lit. So if you checked out Homecoming, definitely comment below and let me know your thoughts for sure. But other than that, we're going to move on to my second beat of this week. And uh, speaking of performances, uh, earlier today, like I said, today's Friday, it was announced that Chris Brown and Nicki Minaj will be going on tour. So it was Variety that exclusively reported. They said that sources let them know that they will be going on tour. And they said that the tour was going to be in the fall, but Chris Brown, he took to his social media and he confirmed that the tour is absolutely true, but it won't be in the fall time. It's going to be this summer, which means that it's going to be sooner than we thought. And I just know that I need to be in there like swimwear. Uh, they said that it's not confirmed whether or not they're going to be like co-headliners or if it's going to be, you know, one is going to be the main headliner. But when you think about it, Nicki Minaj, and Chris Brown. They're co-headlining. Details about it is not available yet, but my common sense is telling me that this is a tour that they are co-headlining. Now, I know Nicki Minaj, she's like on tour overseas, and then the American leg of the tour is supposed to happen. So I don't know if she's, you know, merging with Chris Brown to create a new tour, or like, I don't, I don't know exactly how that's working out, but there is a Nicki Minaj and Chris Brown tour, and I'm really trying to be in there for sure, because it's not you get Chris and you get Nikki at the same time. So that's definitely going to be one of the hottest tours of the summer, without a doubt. And um, also, I just wanted to point out that this week was also 10 years since Nicki Minaj, since Nicki Minaj dropped her mixtape, Be Me Up Scotty. And that literally took me down memory lane this week because and it, it made actual sense. I had to do the math. I was like 10 years. And then I thought about it and I was like 10 years ago, I was a freshman in high school. And I remember freshman year of high school, it was nothing but Nicki Minaj. Like Nicki Minaj mixtapes at that. So all the fans who, if you don't know Nicki Minaj mixtape music, then you're not a real Nicki Minaj fan. Like you gotta know the mixtape days Nicki. So if you know the mixtape days Nicki, then you real good. So it really took me back to high school. It took me back to her mixtape days. And I was like literally listening to Be Me Up Scotty this week. and. Ah, uh, it just, uh, you know, when you just miss those old days, like, oh, it just take you back. So, so I was like, I was a freshman and I remember when this happened freshman year. So I was like, Beyonce took me back to my freshman year of college. Nicki Minaj took me back to my freshman year of high school. Like it was just like a real good week for music. I feel definitely without a doubt. But if you think you're going to be attending Chris Brown's and Nicki Minaj's tour this summer, comment below. Uh, I might need somebody to go with. So if you're in the New York area, they got to come to New York. If they don't come to New York, I'm going to be tight. But besides that, we're going to move on to my third beat of this week. And in my third beat of this week, I just want to send a congratulations to Megan Thee Stallion. Now, she is so fire. I love her. Like, I just love how she's staying. She's repping for the South, number one. But on top of that, like, she's literally a rapper. Like, she raps. Like, no offense to some of these rappers out here, but... I know if I wanted to throw Megan Thee Stallion in like a battle or some shit like that, she gonna rap. She gonna really give us some bars. Now, I first found out about Megan Thee Stallion when the ZZ Challenge was popping. I remember seeing her video, her freestyle for the ZZ Challenge was old, like it was just A1. If you didn't see that, please look it up because she really killed that freestyle. But aside from that, I started seeing just like momentum with her growing on social media. So then what also caught my attention about her aside from her rapping skills was that I seen an article where it said, you know, she's still in college. Like she's still, you know, working on her college degree, still, you know, going to class and everything, 
but also pursuing her music career. So I was like, while she's out here grinding for her music, she's still in college working towards her degree. And she got signed to a major label on top of that while she's doing all of this. Uh, I saw that she said on social media the other day, she was like, oh, I'm just sitting here stressing about how I gotta do summer school. So I was like, even with all of this big stuff that's happening with her, you know, she's still focused on taking these classes so she can get that degree. But like I said, I wanted to congratulate her because this week she finally entered the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Uh, her song, Big Ol' Freak, which is one of my favorite songs. Ew. Big Ol' Freak is one of my favorite songs. Uh, definitely in the gym, that gives me the momentum I'm, I need to like just, you know, keep on going and stuff like that. But that record finally entered the Billboard Hot 100. Now, it was at 99. I saw some people kind of like, oh, it's only 99. All right, but she's still on the chart, number one. So that means she's charting. And that's definitely gonna climb the charts without a doubt. Um, it's definitely gonna be a summer anthem. Like I said, you know, the weather is starting to heat up and stuff like that. So I see a whole bunch of great stuff from Megan Thee Stallion. I love her attitude and I'm just here for her. Like I'm just feeling her. Like I'm really just feeling her and I just want, I just want good stuff for her pretty much. That's what I wanted to say about that. But we will move on to my fourth beat of this week. And I got to talk about Little Yachty. So Little Yachty, he had an interview that uh, was dropped this week with Curring Frost. I, I heard his name before and I seen him before or whatever. But this is probably like the first time that I really like watched one of his interviews. So his interview with Curring, Curring Frost dropped this week here on YouTube to be exact. And, um pretty much they this had like a real just you know interview this discussion and stuff like that but what made this interview different or what made this interview very popular is the fact that um you know little yachty talked about you know how he wrote city girls uh you know hit record act up which is one of the biggest records out right now and um which is weird. It, it went viral because, like I said, you know, it's Little Yachty, and that's kind of like the girls' anthem right now. Like, literally, like, real last give up by the next. Like, so it's kind of like that came from Little Yachty. Like, seriously. <laughs> like, that's what the shocking part about it is. And, you know, they album Girl Code been out. So, I mean, if we all would have kind of paid attention to like writing credits and stuff like that, we would have been known that Little Yachty got writing credits on it. But um, we just didn't care about it until he, you know, said, you know, I wrote that song. <laughs> so then we was like, really? You wrote that song after the song then became real popular? It's like, that you wrote that song for real? That's what the reaction is. Uh, that was about it. Um, He did say, I think it was probably one of JT verses that he didn't write and stuff like that. But, you know, he just kind of talked about, you know, working on it and how he just went to the studio. He's like, he said, no homo. Because, you know, it is a good, like I said, it's a, you know, girl record, an anthem and stuff like that. But, um... I feel like that's good for him like that's good for him so like he got a hit record pretty much and you know that's how the industry works you know a lot of these artists you know have help with writing and stuff like that so the fact that him as a male was able to write that record for girls to just pretty much go off to you know they got the act up challenge so shout outs to him you know he got a hit record um, there was a lot of funny memes and stuff that came through uh, social media when it came to that record. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was dope. I thought it was cool to find out that he had the ability to, not that I didn't think he would have the ability to write, you know, hit singles, but, you know, to write, you know, huge hit singles for other artists, you know, other than himself. So I want to know, what did you guys think when you found out or heard that, Little Yachty was pretty much, you know, one of the main writers <laughs> responsible for ACT UP. Especially because, you know, like I said, it's one of the biggest records out right now. So definitely comment below and let me know that. And for my last beat of this week, I just pretty much want to talk about Nipsey Hussle. Now, you know, this has uh, pretty much been going on since the month of April started. Um, I haven't done a Wouldn't Be Drops video this month, but I kind of felt like it was only right that I added this as a beat because, you know, this is still a very big thing that's going on and it's going to be a very big thing that's probably just going to go on forever. But as you guys know, on last month, well, at the end of the month, you know, right, it was a March 31st, uh, Nipsey Hussle was gunned down, he was killed. Um, 
and last week he was finally laid to rest he had this uh beautiful memorial service at um staples center there were so many people there the performances the speeches like it was I, I cried watching this man's memorial service and this is the one that i didn't know personally but i i was always the type of person that i can go to a stranger's funeral and would probably end up crying but um yeah just because i just have this thing with death anyway but that's not what this is about but um yeah i just wanted to talk about it because like everyone else this is like something that you know you think about on a daily basis to know that you know we've learned so much about him since his passing a lot of the things that probably weren't in the forefront when he was alive but um you know just a lot of the things that we learned about him outside of music whether it was his investments the different people that he was helping uh you know different businesses what he was doing his for community and stuff like that and just to know that someone just felt like they had the right to just literally walk up to this man who was on his property in front of first of all he was in front of his store but not only his store but he owned the whole strip mall that the other stores in so literally this man is on his property the property that he owns minding his business and someone just thought it was just cool to walk up to him not only shoot him like in his torso but literally shoot him in his head and like i'll just never understand this world in a lot of you know the foolishness that goes on but i was working when it happened and to have to report it was just really heartbreaking like i i was in denial at one point like no i don't even want to report this like why is this news like why is this happening you know i was in denial just as a you know journalist as a reporter not wanting to report this just because I didn't want it to be true pretty much. But um like every everyone says is but my heart really does go out, you know, to his family, you know, just to watch, you know, Lauren London go through the hurt that she's going through because, you know, like she said, that was the love of her life. Like I never want to experience any of that type of pain. Like it's just crazy. But um it's good to know that and I think one of the good things about being, you know, a creative and being people who like you know make content and stuff like that is that even when you're gone you know your work will still be here your work will still you know speak for you and you know people will always have something to remember you by to where your legacy you know your visual your voice will never die so like i said prayers to his family it's it's still heartbreaking to know what happened to him but um yeah he did some amazing things you know while he was here in He'll, his his legacy, his memory will absolutely never, ever die. So I just wanted to, you know, I had to incorporate that. I had to, you know, mention that here. But other than that, those are my five hot beats of this week. Okay, guys, so I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's video. Now, of course, you know I have to end every single video by reminding you guys to comment, like, subscribe, and share. It will greatly be appreciated. Now, y'all know I got to end this video by giving y'all my song of the week. And my song of the week is going to have to go to the baby. So another one of my favorite songs, especially when I'm in the gym, is his song, Shug. Like, I'm a young CEO, Shug. Like, that is my song. So, uh, yeah, the baby, Shug, song of the week. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will check y'all next time. So, bye. Hey guys, thank you for watching, and don't forget to share and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.